Uh, and welcome to this particular panel on today. My name is Donald Cole at the, from the University of uh, Mississippi, and I'll be moderating this panel this morning. Uh, and uh, we have three, found, three great panelists to talk to us about. Let me start this morning by asking all of the undergraduate students in here to raise your hand. All of the undergrads, keep your hands up, raise your hand, and keep them up. Okay, now, uh, let me uh, maybe what ask, is, uh, 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 ask another question. Uh, keep your hands up. <laughs> How many of these undergrads with their hand up plan on going to graduate school? All right, so your hands close to stay up. Okay, <laughs> now you can let them down. Uh, so, and from here, we have some panelists to tell us about applying to graduate school, which is the title of the panelist. panel. I'm going to let each member introduce themselves and maybe talk a little bit for about three minutes or so. Uh, and then uh, I'll say something. And uh, the other thing for the students in here, get out a piece of paper and a pen right in front of you. Uh, not only do I want you to take notes, but I want every one of you all to ask questions. Uh, all the faculty in here will ask questions after you. So I'm going to point at each one of you all to ask a uh, uh, question, or if it, even if it's for them to comment on something that they've already said. At that point, Don, let me start with uh, you, if I may. Uh, okay, a moment ago, <laughs> then we'll go down the line. Okay, so, so thank you very much. Uh, my name is Don King. I'm associate professor at Northeastern University uh, in Boston. Uh, I've been there for uh, since uh, roughly 1980. And uh, in fact, I, I have a master's from uh, Northeastern University. and. That's where I received a lot of the mentoring and, and guidance that uh, helped me succeed in my uh, doctoral studies, which were at MIT. So I'll just say a few words uh, about the program, some of the, you know, the good, and then also uh, some, some of the bad. So I'd say in terms of size, we have uh, roughly 35 PhD students and maybe roughly 40 students in the master's program. I'll talk mostly about the uh, PhD program because the master's program, there's very little money available uh, for, for students who, who undertake that. So most of the money is concentrated in the, in the PhD program. I, I want to emphasize, uh, particularly in the last 10 years, we've, we've uh, hired a number of very strong and active faculty, four of whom have uh, received uh, Sloan uh, Fellowship, that's a very prestigious award for uh, faculty, and um, pr predominantly in the areas of uh, algebra, represent, uh, rep algebra geometry, and uh, so-called representation theory, where I work. So there's a group uh, of uh, maybe 10, 12 of us in, in that in that area, and uh, recently that group received the NSF training grant, which means there are more resources for for students, including, uh, in fact, undergraduates, but for students, for, for postdocs, uh, things like summer, uh, summer support and, and so forth are coming from that grant. And uh, that's, if you chose that area, that's one of the things that, that, uh, that you could look forward to if you were admitted. I'd say that uh, we are, I think, on the small to moderate in size. Uh, but it is, uh, it is very competitive. Um, one of the things is that Northeastern faculty have always had links to other institutions around, and uh, particularly these days, MIT, a number of our faculty work closely with people at MIT, and there are a number of uh, seminars, joint seminars between uh, MIT and Northeastern. So you, you have to you know, sort of feel good about possibly being in an in environment like that. Um, the, I say the, the admission standards are, it's fairly competitive. We, we do place a lot of emphasis on the S, uh, the subject matter GRE that uh, Ed Ray was talking about. Uh, I think in, we rely too much on that. Um, we have to look at it, have a I think, more holistic approach to, to admissions, and that's something I'm pushing. But. I'm in a, well, I'm in a minority on, on that issue. <laughs> so um, that's unfortunate, but we're being, but I think a number of us in the department are concerned about diversity and want to work on it, and we're being pushed by the dean of our college. So I expect the things to change over the next few years. I want to uh, 
note that we've uh, recently hired uh, Mboyo Ezele, an outstanding, I don't know how to call it, physicist, uh, geometer. Uh, so he's, he's bringing a lot of uh, emphasis, to, uh, a lot of energy to the department. And I, with his help and others uh, who are progressive minded, I expect the situation to, to change for minorities there. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Kevin, go ahead. OK, so the, the topic here is applying for graduate school. You just described one graduate school. I'll describe another, and then I'll say a little bit more about just applying. Uh, but first of all, who am I? I'm Helen Grundman. I'm the Director of Education and Diversity at the American Mathematical Society. Um, and I'm going to refrain from advertising about it. But hey, it's great. Take a look at it. Um, before I went to the AMS, uh, which I've been at for about a year, year and a half, uh, 25 years at Bryn Mawr College. You may think that that doesn't affect your life any, but I'll let you know. Bryn Mawr College has a very small PhD program in mathematics. Uh, small. You want small? You got usually about six PhD program students, six PhD students, and maybe a couple uh, master's students who are mostly advanced undergraduates working on both their undergraduate degree and their MA at the same time. Um, you get an incredibly supportive group of students there. So if you are interested in a very small school, I recommend that you look at that as a possibility. Um, it being a small school, I mean, when you have six students, um, is it diverse? That's going to change from year to year. So if you, if you are very concerned about that, it might not be the right place for you. If you want other students who are on your side, if you want the faculty on your side, it's a great place to go. Now, why do I bother telling you that? I'm not even there. I can't even get you to come work with me at this point. <laughs> but, but the reason I'm telling you about it is because I want you to see that there are a lot of graduate schools out there. There is a wide variety of options. How do you find out what might be good for you? Well, you can do what I did. I asked everyone I knew. I just, I went up to every math professor I could find and said, where should I go to graduate school? <laughs> I probably said it in that tone of voice and all, but, um, and I got a wide variety of answers. And then I took those answers to someone else. I said, well, what do you think about these? And um, if I were doing it now, I would then look them up on the internet. And when I got to the point of, okay, here's a whole bunch I want to look at, contact those departments. Find out if there's a graduate student in that department who'd be willing to either talk to you on the phone or exchange email with you. Find out if they're happy there. Find out if most of the people are happy there. Find out what it's like and if it's something that you think you would feel at home with. As I said, there are a lot of schools out there. If you keep going to people and they keep naming the top few schools, then you gotta find some other people to ask. Sure, top few schools might be a good option. Don't only apply to the top few schools. Getting into graduate school, a lot of it is a crapshoot. Sorry, that's all there is to it. You might get in, you might not. Don't put all your eggs in those silly baskets that are highly ranked. Make sure that you apply to a range of things. Now, you say to me, hold it, I don't have money, there's application fees, what am I gonna do? Contact the department, search the web pages. Most programs now have a, a fee waiver option. And a lot of them, it's just you have to say, I have problems with coming up with the money and they will waive it for you. Some of them want a little more, fill out a form, whatever. Just, it takes a little more extra work. But I really do believe you should apply to a variety of places. And if you get in, a lot of them will help you to come and visit and see the place and really see if you feel at home there. Okay? I haven't said anything about actually going through the process yet, but at this point, it's to figure out where to apply. I say spread your nets wide, see what might fit for you, and uh, go on from there. Thank you so much. Hello. What do you want? Brian, go right ahead. Okay, hi. Come in. Hi, I'm Ryan Hine. I'm an assistant professor at uh, UPenn in Philadelphia, near Bryn Mawr. Um, so 
So, okay, we've heard some good uh, advice. I want to touch on a couple of things, probably before we open it up for questions. Um, the first is uh, your application. It's important how you make your application. It takes time. Time to establish relationships with your letter writers. Give them an idea about what you want to do, where you want to go to grad school, where you want to go to grad school, what your ambitions are. Helps them write better letters for you. Letters of recommendation are one of the crucial parts of your, uh, your application. So you, you want to get started early, and uh, the word I like to use is a lot of time. Don't try to find time to do your application. <laughs> a lot of time. Um, it is as important, if not more important, than whatever else you're doing now, including your, uh, your classwork. That's probably a little controversial to say that for a room for a professor, but, but uh, the reason why I say that is because you can, you know, you can make up your, your grades, what you're doing this semester, will be seen, will be seen, so you don't want to totally bomb it, but you can sacrifice a little bit of time to make sure your application is in order. Um, and th the reason I believe that is because grad school is really where your training occurs. You know, as an undergraduate, you, you get a little bit of a taste of uh, what uh, math statistics is like or whatever field that you're interested in. But at grad school is really where you dig in. And this is really kind of like an apprenticeship almost. This is really where you learn a lot, like your experience at MSRIF, or MSRIF, you just magnify that by, you know, instead of six weeks, you're doing that over three years. Maybe not as intensive, but but uh, it's uh, it's a lot different, and uh, and it's what people, you know, when you're <coughs> when you're in the math world, when you're going for a job later, people want to know where did you study, who did you study under, to get more of an idea of what you've done. As an undergraduate, you might have an idea from what classes you taking but it's really just the beginning so uh, keep that in mind um, another thing I want to emphasize is that um, minority students are, are in demand I, I, I believe that um, even though there aren't so many if you go to a lot of places and you say well okay <laughs> looks like a nice university but man I don't see too many other minority students um, it is something that a lot of universities, so I work at Penn, it's, a, it's an elite university. Um, we like to think the math department is pretty down to earth, but we really do um, do our best to try to at least consider what my, you know, diversity would do for our department. Uh, one piece of evidence is we started a bridge program there. I'm also like, uh, Don, I'm taking a moment here to advertise. Please. Um, so for students, because we've had a lot of students that we thought, boy, I mean, maybe if their test scores were a little bit better or they had a little bit more training, you know, we, you know, we'd feel better about admitting them. And I thought that was really such a small thing that, boy, let's just give them an extra year of classes and then they'll be good to go. And so the university and the math department have been working together to do that. Um, but I'll tell you, I look at all the applications and I try to fight for every every student of, uh, particularly every student of color, different students, women, that we can get just to, uh, just to make, you know, give the department a little bit more color, uh, figuratively speaking. Um, so, uh, so keep that in mind. I, you know, I think, like I said, a good student, especially a good minority student, is, is, is in demand. So um, I really encourage you, don't, don't play around with it. Like right now, make sure you do those applications Tell your letter writers, hey, I'm ready. Can you help me? Um, and the last thing is, keep in mind grad fellowships. You're applying to uh, grad school. It's about the same amount of work to uh, write an NSF uh, application or NSF fellowship or, or foundation fellowship. I mean, why not? When I was a student, I, I told people I was applying for these things. Um, I went to a conference like this and someone encouraged me, hey, you know, you should go for it. And when I went back to uh, my, my institution and I got some people to help me, but I was telling more of my professors and some of them were like, well, all right, all right, you know, if you want, you know, you can try, they're very competitive. Uh, and it's true, um, 
But you never know what, what happens. You know, it's like a game. You know, when you're in the game, you, you never know. You know, you might just see a way. You know, you might have a good idea. You might write about something that resonates with uh, someone on the panel that says, "Give your kid a chance." And uh, so, I think you're in a good position if you're, you're here now. Uh, presumably, you're doing some research. You're taking some uh, pretty high-level classes that. Uh, you, uh, you're in a good position. So uh, take it seriously, a lot time, and I, I, think, I think you'll be fine. Can I, can I bounce off of something yes, that one you second. said? Yes. Letters of recommendation. Many students are just terrified of asking a professor to write for them. We want to write those letters. We are so thrilled when a student of ours wants to go graduate school. Don't be afraid to ask. I just, I know students are kind of, well, no one would write for me, and I know, don't believe that. You just have to talk to them, and as, as he said, make sure that they know what it is you're interested in. Make sure that once you've put together your applications, you give it to the letter writers. The last thing you want to do is have you saying, oh, I really want to do applied math, and your letter writer says, oh, it would be great in straight real analysis. <laughs> you know, you want to make sure, just let the letter writer have the information. They can back you up and really help you with getting where you're trying to go. Thank, thank, thank you so much, Taylor. Class, the letter recommendation. Yeah. The standard. We're happy with it. The typical. Happy with it. Let me make, make, me make a few uh, comments, and then uh, I want to open up to the course. Uh, to audience uh, as well, particularly the, uh, the students, and, and it's about applying to, uh, to, to graduate school. Uh, and uh, and as, a, as a former associate dean of the graduate school for years and years, this is something that's dear to my heart. But let me maybe mention, uh, for starters there, because many of you all are, uh, particularly to the undergraduates, and now you're applying to graduate school, there are two major differences between your application for undergraduate school and your application for graduate school. When you were an undergraduate, you sent in an application, uh, and it hit the school, and some, uh, and some staff members sit there, and they looked at it, and they said, mm, two English, two credits of English, check, so many credits of math, check, et cetera. Boom, and an acceptance letter kind of came out to you. Well, it's a little different when it comes to, uh, to graduate education. Uh, the first thing, when your application comes in for graduate school, graduate application, it doesn't hit a staff member. Sorry, guys. It hits faculty. It hits faculty first. The other big difference is that an undergraduate, they finished uh, checking everything and you had uh, everything that it took, you were qualified and so you accepted. The graduate school is a little bit different. Everybody's qualified. And so the word qualified then changes to competitiveness. And so you want to make your application a little bit more competitive than his application, etc. And so these are some of the things that uh, we want you to think about and some of the things that we want you to ask them about, some of the things that we want to talk about. I like to think about it in terms of they've already mentioned it as an application package. You send an application in, then the, along with that you have to have some type of test scores, normally a GRE, Along with that, you have to have something else called a, a recommendation. Along with that, you have to have a, a personal statement. And so this is kind of a whole package that it is. And so we can talk about those packages uh, as well. So throwing all those definitions uh, out. Uh, and so I want to start off with the students and the questions first. And for faculty who is here, you probably know that there are some questions that they should ask. And so if there's some that is unasked, be sure to uh, ask those as well. Uh, there are people in this world that will pay to get in a panel like this, to hear the expertise of things that's already been mentioned this morning. But we want to give it to you free. <laughs> so let me, uh, at this point, uh, open it up and see if there are any, any, uh, any questions for the, for the panel. Or from the students there, every student's got to answer, they uh, got to ask a question. Uh, we might not give each one of you all a chance 
to answer each one of the questions. So if one come up, we just we'll might just we'll fight over it. We'll fight over it. That's right. <laughs> right. It'll be like Jerker. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So we can get to more questions. Yes, sir. Yes. When I apply to that school, should I present myself as a student who's pretty focused on one specific area of mathematics, or should I present myself as someone who's willing to try new things? That's a good question. Both. That's a good question. Both. 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 We're, Both. we're in agreement here. Both. I mean, be honest. You are very excited about this one particular region, but you realize that there are other areas you don't know as much about, and you're excited to learn about them, too. I mean, you definitely want to talk about this one area you're excited about because one of the things that, that we look for in college, at, in grad school applications, is enough enthusiasm that you're going to get through the hard parts. Everybody hits a hard, I assume. Well, maybe these people are accepted, but everyone hits a hard point in graduate school. Yeah. All of my friends at some point are like, why am I doing this? What am I doing here? Yes. And it is your enthusiasm for mathematics, your desire to do this stuff, that gets you through that. So it's really important to communicate that in your personal statement. But yes, you don't want to say, this is definitely the only thing I want to do, because what if the only professor at that school who supervises dissertations in that area isn't looking for students right now? Suddenly, boom, you're out of the running. So, so you, it's. I would definitely recommend giving a. Absolutely. A, a Thank you. Open. That's right. And you're so right. Uh, uh, you're going to question yourself up in there sometime in grad. If you don't, something wrong with the graduate program. <laughs> uh -huh. That's that's why I'm going to pay you a whole bunch of money when you finish. Yes. Uh, simultaneously. Yes, hey, sir. We pay you a lot of money while you're doing this. That, that, <laughs> I'm 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 hoping to graduate next year, and I'm struggling after algebra, and I'm hoping to graduate and go on some college in, in the U.S here, out of state, I need to work work to get the scholarship, and scholarship pay for my um, board, and um, pay for my stuff back in when Texas, for Texas A&M, mm -hmm. for like, for my master's. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, getting a master's cool. might be a good step, it was for me. No, because mm -hmm. how are you going to get this, because mm -hmm. you should, should get a work for a $5,000 stipend. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, th thank you for the, uh, the comment. And right before your question, he mentioned something about a stipend. They mentioned something about a stipend. And uh, this is uh, what we need a film on me right now because this is what I always do. I always say to all of my graduate students, financing <laughs> cannot be a reason that you don't go to graduate school. <laughs> Finances cannot be a reason. It's, it's money's out there. It's how much you have to do to get it, how you have to present yourself, etc. Uh, so, uh, let me take your question. For a person like me, um, you're not quite sure where you're at or what you want to do. I, in my classes right now, when I, when concepts are presented to me, I, I'm a pragmatic person. I like to see how it applies. So I figured I want to be in the in applied mathematics. Oh. So I figured that much, but. What exactly do I want to do? I have not quite put my, wrap my head yes. around that yet. So mm -hmm. how would you assist a guy like me and how would I apply to okay. one of your programs? Good question, good question. Yeah, we do it in undergraduate. People have the undeclared major. Yeah, so, so in terms of graduate students. Maybe you want to look at schools that do offer a, a variety of courses or uh, in applied math. I mean, I have to admit that we're kind of a little weak there, but we have one uh, professor, Ting Ju, who studies medical imaging. I don't know if you are aware of that, but there are many mathematical problems that are associated with the use of CAT scans and various other. And so she, she is, uh, she's very strong in that. She's one of the people who won the Sloan Award, so. You, you don't have to know That's exactly right. what you're gonna do. That's right. I, I'm kind of the opposite of you. Applied math has never worked for <laughs> me. I, I, but my, my graduate school applications said that I did not know what it is I want to do. All I know is that I don't want to do applied math, except for the departments that were, ooh, applied math is great, but I didn't mention that I didn't want to do applied math. But <laughs> I, I, I literally stated the fact, you know, I, I just, I love 
everything else that I've seen in mathematics. I'm planning to go there. I was aware of uh, friends of mine who had gone for one specific field and then they hooked up with that professor as an advisor and it wasn't really going and they ended up having to change fields and I was just kind of like, I'm going to go, I'm going to find someone yes. who I can work with and yes. I literally told people as I am going to fall in love with whatever it is that person does and that's what I did. I found a good professor and, and lucky for me, he did number theory. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, if you want to respond, fine. But right before we respond, when you first hit there, you're going to be sitting beside individuals that know exactly what they want to do. You'll be sitting beside others who not exactly sure whatever they want to do. But there are certain uh, there are certain uh, areas in mathematics that every mathematician studies, uh, irrespective of where they end up, uh, uh, what field that they end up in. So you can't uh, get through graduate school without an algebra class. You can't get to it. So when you first start there, it's okay. But just like uh, in, in undergraduate, something is going to catch your attention. Some professor, even in the hall talking with them, are going to say, uh, you're going to have a conversation that's going to you know, focus uh, you or something. Something's going to happen somewhere along the way. Uh, we beat up on that a little bit. Ryan, you, uh, I'll, I'll let you uh, respond to this question. So, uh, for sure. Uh, well, I just wanted to gotcha. say, yeah. gotcha. well, th this was great, what was communicated. I think it's important to be opportunistic in, in life and in, uh, in your career in math and grad school, because you don't know who you will come across. You don't know what That's ideas right. will really be uh, important that people will be thinking about or what will grab you. It's perfectly fine not to know. Just to say, hey, I like math. and. And hey, if you like stuff that appeals to your pragmatism, fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, you'd be fine uh, yeah, please. doing math. Yeah, thank that you. philosophy. <laughs> Go ahead. It's actually a comment. <laughs> Follow up on that. Uh, at some universities, you have departments, math departments, with faculty that do apply math. But then there are other universities that have separate departments, math and Apply math or center. Mm -hmm. I went to Cornell, for example, and the apply math program was not in the math department. They mm -hmm. have their own center for applied mathematics. So you might just not overlook that. Yeah. But in mm -hmm. some institutions, yeah. you have to really you, you want to apply to the applied math department. Right. right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Also, <laughs> the, there are separate math departments. Several applied math department from the from the pure math department. Yep. That's yeah. what we yeah. said. Yeah, because yes. at Texas yes. A&M, you said, you said uh, 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 applied, um, applied mathematical science. Okay. Because that's a good example. There's also mm -hmm. the fact that at a lot of schools that do have the two departments, it's not too difficult to change between them One if you the realize that is, you're in the wrong that place, that's that's that you true. want to go to the and other they department. they generally recognize so that as well. Let me maximize my number of questions being asked, particularly from the students on the back row. Thank you. I have two questions. Yeah, I got two ears. Well, response to him. Um, you can also look into um, the areas that um, math is applied to. Like some engineering um, degrees offered by most of the just math. So maybe you just want to look at an area of like Spanish or a word or something like that. A lot of the both runs the rigors of math and the application of math. Okay. Um, I don't understand why that's a question, but <laughs> that's a comment. Uh, yeah, my question is uh, regarding the graduate school. Um, I missed part of um, uh, the session here that was great. Uh, so I don't know if you talked about um, the, the, the interview process when it comes to um, interview, being interviewed for uh, graduate school. We haven't mentioned that at, at, at the field. Oh, okay. Oh, I mentioned sorry. Yeah, so should should you get to the point where they're considering you and they ask you to come in for an interview or should you uh, choose yourself to go to a place to visit, et cetera? Uh, I think it's kind of the question. How, how should you present yourself if you, particularly if you end up with an, uh, with an interview? Any comments? Uh, well, I, I think it, it's useful to visit the it's useful. Mm -hmm. and especially uh, 
you know, talking to other graduate students is going to tell you what's happening. That's, that's very important. Uh, interview, I, I don't know that I have any good suggestion. I, so if you know, many students I, are not interviewed. Yeah, I don't think it's that common to be interviewed for a math graduate program. Um, we do have people visit, and if you visit, you are likely to be in an office with a professor feel like in, feeling like you're being interviewed. And, and I have colleagues who definitely, when someone visits, uh, <laughs> make the person feel like they're being, what did you take, and how did you, and what did you learn in this class? And you know, I'm kind of like, whereas I tend to just sit back and say, well, what do you like? What's the, um, but but I don't I don't think that's really that common of a. It did occur sometimes, but not not because uh, a little, you you said a little earlier is that uh, you don't want to put all of, I think the word you use your eggs in one basket, and so in particular um, uh, you, you're going to send off several applications, and some of these people up here might have a, a number. Sometimes for my students, I, I don't send off less than six applications, etc. And so. Uh, uh, so you're liable not to be uh, interviewed at you know, all these places, etc. When it does occur, then uh, then pretty much they have already probably decided to, to take you, uh, and they want to make sure you don't want to give them a reason not to take you. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, she, she I want to add something to that too. So let me rephrase a little bit, um, or ask uh, you know a slightly different question: Is how should you present yourself and through the whole process? Um, your, you know, your application mostly stands on its own. Most graduate schools, um, as we heard, there's usually a committee. Some four or five faculty sit together mm -hmm. and look at the applications, look at them, <clears throat> and decide who they want to discuss at a meeting and think about uh, either making an offer to, inviting, maybe talking to on the phone, maybe some, maybe not a formal interview, but some sort of contact. Um, because hey, we may have a student who, you know, maybe they look good on paper, but we want to check them out. This happens not only in the states, but also foreign students. Maybe it's a school we haven't heard of, and we think, well, okay, maybe we'll talk to them on Skype a little bit, and just to kind of feel them out, yeah. see if they are, you know, what they say they are. Now, if they come from a familiar school where you know we know the letter writers, or could easily look them up on the internet, but. If not, we may do a little bit more work. So throughout, I think you want to, I mean, the best possible scenario is if you uh, present yourself as someone who's knowledgeable about mathematics at the appropriate level. So say, has good undergraduate training, maybe master's training, but good undergraduate training. So you've taken some um, upper division classes and you can converse a little bit about that. You know, if you've taken a number theory class or a complex variables class, maybe you can what was interesting about it? You know, can, can you can you give a you know some sort of response to that? You may not be put on the spot like this, but you know you might be, if, especially if we don't see it in the application. But you know you uh, you could be, and you show a great willingness to get a PhD. So as we heard, um, you know there are going to be a lot of bumps along the way, and it's great oh, if sure. we feel like. Wow, this person uh, did a couple research projects, and their advisor said, "Wow, they just really worked harder than you know all the other students I had." Then we think, "Okay, well, yeah, sure. they, they they know a little bit about what it what it takes." And lastly, if you come across as being you know personable, pretty flexible, and seem like you'd be good to have around, that doesn't hurt either. So that's probably not too different than most forms of. Uh, um, employment, but I think everything you do is in some ways an interview. You know how that, you know, if I'm talking about a student and I like the student, maybe it's an African American student from Mega Evers. It's not just me that's got to like, other people have got to like the student too. So when I'm passing, say, hey, can you take a look that's at this? That's exactly You know, right. it does a whole lot Good if, point. if, boy, it's just polished. Yeah. Good point. It's polished. Those letters say, hey, you know, this student, I've had a lot of students here, and boy, I'll tell you, this student worked hard. The homeworks were were great, and then they came to office hours oh, and man. asked good questions. Now you talk. That's right. This is typical of a, of a uh, admissions committee here, individuals, and, and you are represented simply by the papers that you pass in. Your application sits here. Your scores sits here. 
the recommendation sit here. They're arguing amongst uh, themselves, et cetera. Other questions? Uh, yes, sir. I had a question you mentioned, like um, making sure like the grad schools you choose have people that you would want to do. Like what, how much like contact did you have with those like potential PhD advisors like before applying? If any. See, I'm I'm a believer in in picking a good school and finding someone you can work with. But if you have a particular thing you want to do, then. Yeah, I don't think you, I don't think you need someone there. You don't need you don't need you don't need a contact. If you have a contact, you say, hey, I I know the kid, or I know the I know the I know the MSRI of the advisor and. The, this person says they're good. Okay, that, that could help you, but the vast majority of people don't, you, you know, they don't have a contact. The vast majority of people that are, that apply or accept it or whatever, they don't have a strong uh, contact or someone um, there who could directly vouch for them. It's usually the application is the main source of, uh, of, of how the decision is made. I guess some of my men, I don't know if that answers your question. Some of my men is like, before I've heard advice of like, like if you don't know them, but you know you want to work with them, like to contact them and like talk to them. Like I don't know if that's like a thing um, that's done. It's, if you really know that, if you believe this is the person I want to work with, then sure, contact them. But unless they're willing to make some sort of a commitment, I'm going to go back to don't put all your eggs in one basket. I mean, I've had a, a master's student who went someplace for a PhD, determined to work with this one professor, and after getting there found out, oh, that professor almost never takes on grad students. Yeah. And actually ended up leaving graduate school. Just, uh, I, you know. So I'm, I'm like, go someplace where you're gonna have options if you can at all. Or make sure you have something very, you know, ironclad with that professor. I, I have had students go intending to work with a particular professor, but it was someone that she'd already worked with in an REU, and you know they already had this sort of understanding. But otherwise, yeah. be careful. Uh, more, more focus, more segmented. But there, there. No, I'm listening. Okay. Okay. But, there, there, but, but there are some things that you want to uh, look and sort of know. You want to know time to degree uh, at, at an institution. You don't have to actually. Have someone there, but you could, uh, but you could find that out. You want to know if that's if that institution has ever graduated a minority student. Uh, there are some in mathematics, or in your different. There's some that, that have not. That might be some stuff of interest that you want to uh, to know. Generally, with the professor, that, you know that that's a trust relationship that kind of comes over time. And so once you get there, then you're going to probably find out, you know, somebody that uh, that you want to. Uh, Probably want to work with kind of like finding a girlfriend. You just can't look them up in the yellow pages. <laughs> I want that one. It's, it's or, fair to ask. Yeah. It, it's definitely fair to ask the institution about their track record. About their track record. Yeah. You want to make a comment? So my, my comments along those lines. I mean, my personal experience was following. I I intended to go to graduate school to work with a specific person, hmm. and and then through his quirk, that person left. Okay. And I and I and I felt like you know someone was yeah. rolling around without a father, so I or a mother, and so my, my you know I've always sort of advised students that they should you know reach out to have some sense of who they want to work with, and not just sort of be there. Particularly, you know, I say this kind of particularly for a minority student, to sort of sometimes the social mores are not so oh. easy to negotiate. Ooh. So. So you, yes. so you sort of want to have some pre-contact before sort of you know who it is that you're going to sort of speak so that you know, you're not there trying to go and rap on doors asking to be like, you know, because these, I, I've had those kinds of questions where, you know, you've rapped on the door and said, well, you know, I'm not taking on new students now. And you understand this later because you right. know, taking on a student is a four or five year responsibility. It, it, it is. Yeah. And you said something that's very important, you know, once, once they, even though this is kind of applying to grad school, but once they're the social aspects of it can be just as demanding <laughs> as the academic part of it as, as well. Yeah, for sure, those social interactions. Students, give me some more questions. Students, give me some more questions. 
Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, so you talked about competitiveness versus mm -hmm. um, everyone being qualified. So yes. what makes the student more competitive? Than Good the question. Actually, actually, say it real loud so everybody can hear it. So what makes a student more competitive than another one of my dad? That's right. What makes them one student more competitive than, than, than the other? You are the seniors, and so you're going to turn your transcripts in. And uh, your GPA, it can do only so much now, you know, because uh, it's hard to move a GPA as a, as a senior now. And so some of these other factors that we kind of, what can make some, somebody well, more whole, competitive than others? I mean, the, the whole package, I mean. The package. Your right. letters. See? I mean, it makes a difference if you have. I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that. Letters. I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that. <laughs> yes, that's yeah. very important. You can do something about that now. Yeah, you can do something about your letters now. Have yeah. people proofread your yes. statements. Oh. Have lots of people proofread your statements. Oh, You'd be so amazed the, how yes. little errors will sneak in there and you yes. won't see them because you worked on it long and hard. Have some people proofread it again and again. Yes. Just You want it to look really nice. You don't want to be able to have people focus on you know, mm -hmm. oh, they that spelled they this word that wrong because suddenly they aren't focusing on your love of mathematics, your interest in all this. That's very important yeah. uh, because uh, you're sending in a, uh, a package. I have written a, 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 a recommendation that I knew has overcome a student's uh, GPA. They have good command of, uh, of, of, of the vague immigration. Uh, you know, I, I've personally sort of written one that, that, that got students in. And, and so uh, letters are written. They can't come from your pastor. He, everybody know you're a good, uh, you know, a good, uh, a good boy, a good, <laughs> good fellow. They ought to come from somebody who knows you academically. That's right. We can't talk too much. Go, go ahead. And then I get you wrong. So what, what, uh, what, what class are you in now? You, you a senior or a junior? Mm -hmm. OK. Um, I mean, I would think. I would look more internally, like what could I do to sort of improve? I mean, you know, the competitiveness, I mean, some things may be out of your 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 uh, control, like what you did last year in linear algebra or, or uh, you know, I mean, I can't speak for every university, but in my university, I mean, if an undergraduate's coming from Harvard, say, that would be more than if he was coming from Ohio State, and so that'd be a more competitive I wouldn't say you should even worry about that. Just think about what you could do. So you're a junior, you could take um, the, the, the most challenging courses that are core mathematic courses offered by your university. You could uh, you could apply and do an, an REU, like, uh, like we heard this talk yes. yesterday. And, Good point. And uh, Good point. try to give a talk or two on that. If you have a core course that you didn't do so well in, See if you can take some course that will help you learn that stuff. If you need to do an independent reading course, or if there's a course that depends on it that your professor thinks you'll be able to do, show that you aren't just going, oh well, you know, so much for that. If you can write, I, you know, I had a poor grade in this, but I've now, you know, made up, or better yet, if your letter writer can say, yes. wow, didn't do well in the second semester of abstract algebra but then went on and did this to make up for it and I now have complete faith you know that's the sort of thing I think that Ryan's talking about yeah. work with it go yeah. Yeah. do the best to improve yeah. to come up with the you know the best version of you you can you got you got a year so uh, there's a lot you can do by taking classes by nurturing relationships with people who will write you letters <laughs> taking a class or two you got you know have a good relationship with the professor and you know they get to know you and that, that could really make for a great letter yeah. down the line. That's right. Uh, uh, Rob, while, while, while you're at it, uh, I heard a term that uh, we all understand, but maybe some people don't. Tell them what an REU is and then uh, ask your question. You mentioned REU, that's so important. I, I believe that a research experience for undergraduate is something that anyone who is applying should have at least one. And um, so that means that you go and work with, I guess, a research institute. What's a great point that would you need to go to a research program? I was thinking about this for our undergrad research program, but Texas A&M? Yes. Yes, what's a great point that you need to have? 
I don't know if it's the grade point average as much as the um, application and letters of recommendation, but uh, it shares to be somewhere around the B average. I mean, it's like, um, so at least a B or close to a B. But um, I would like to say that and you, and you it get, would be uh, helpful. You got one minute to say it. Okay, <laughs> I'd like to say that it'd be helpful if you have a list of student uh, um, colleges that you're interested in, that you visit their website and see what graduate courses they are offering. You know, um, because you may be interested in a subject that they really don't have. See what graduate courses they're offering and see what graduate, uh, undergraduate courses they're offering and um, so that you make sure that you have a better match. And, um, and so visit the website. And um, if you like this department, uh, you may want to actually buy a, a textbook or something and read on your own during the summer. Mm -hmm. You know, um, a lot of things to prepare. Um, you have a summer between undergraduate and graduate. You might just take the textbook that they're offering at the school that you're interested in, reviewing them so that you don't go in cold like I did on my very first <laughs> day. I didn't understand a single thing I saw. Well, they're going to cut us off, but yeah, yeah, the secret okay. is the three of us are going to be here, That's and it's true. possible to talk to us. For sure. So. Yeah, for, for uh, sure. Uh, what was it, a comment or a question? Comment. Uh, uh, can can it be done in 30 seconds? <laughs> uh, get a mentor. Mm -hmm. When you were asking about how do I make myself more competitive, and then some of the things you advise, you know, advanced classes, do this, do that. A mentor would look at your profile and would tell you, you need to strengthen this a year ahead, not months right. when applications are due, but, or two years. You, whenever you have a mentor, that person is gonna be looking out for you. And early on, it's gonna try to put you in the right path, which is connected to what you said, of knowing somebody in the institution that you're going to, Sometimes your mentor will advise you to apply to programs where they do have connections That's and right. they trust that people there will welcome you and bring you, give you some support. So ask somebody who uh, got her undergrad somewhere else and came here from graduate school and as somebody who has been very involved in mentoring programs throughout my professional Sorry. career here. I think for minority students, the, the role of the mentor is, is crucial. That mm -hmm. would be my... Okay. Yeah, very quick. Yes. Slow. One thing I wanted to add, I haven't really said earlier, is that when it comes to your personal statement, quite mm -hmm. often I've seen incongruity between what a student tries to bluff and say about themselves or what they transfer to something differently. So you have to be honest about yourself in, in terms of your strengths and weaknesses <coughs> in that personal statement, because I think the reviewer would appreciate your candor rather mm -hmm. than you coming and trying to make yourself appear to be this super student when your transcripts are something to <laughs> <laughs> that. That so would last, I yeah. would say be open. Don't be afraid to tell your story because that's what a personal statement is all about. And if you could, if you had a weak point during your undergraduate career, but at the same time you were able to make up for it in other areas, talk about that weakness, why that was a weakness for you, and then talk about what you were able to do to reclaim yourself so that you became a better student. And that's what they would re they would appreciate more if he was a student. Great job, uh, faculty. Raise your hand, all faculty. Uh, up in here, raise, raise your hand, all faculty. This panel comes into uh, two sessions. One session is what we've done here, and the second session is over lunch. I don't want to see any faculty. I want to see students hovering around the uh, area with uh, with faculty as we kind of go out uh, in the in the session and eat. At this time, let me uh, ask you to recognize our panel uh, for the great job. <laughs> any announcements before we? Uh, uh, so, Terrence, are we going to go for the problem solving session? Yeah, I think I think we we can check see whether or not the food is there and, and what, what's your assessment? Uh, I think I think we go for the problem solving. Yeah, we, yeah, we, 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 okay. we can do it. I mean, we could probably just do it in here. Yeah. yeah. Can we do it in here? We can do it here. Yeah. Okay. All right. So maybe we'll just take like a two minute break and kind of get things set. Sounds good. So let's actually thank our moderator. All right. Cool. Thank you.